Okay, good morning. My name is Elizabeth Ferry, and I'm here with Amy Paskov, and we are going to be presenting on technology in the math classroom. Both Amy and myself are math teachers currently. I teach middle school math, and then I'll have Amy give a little bit of a background on herself as well. We are both in the uh, University of New Haven um, Instructional Technology and Digital Media Literacy six-year certification course. Um, I'm a high school math teacher. I teach ninth grade uh, in Meriden. And um, this is just a little bit of um, a brief introduction about how we can use technology in a math classroom. And I forgot to mention, I teach eighth grade math in New Haven at Morrill Sheridan Magnet School, primarily pre-algebra and algebra one. All right, just to... And I know a lot of you probably don't need to know this information, but this is a, one of the things we wanted to just discuss is why should we use, be using more technology in the math classroom? When I talk to a lot of other math teachers, they say, well, of course I use technology in my math classroom. I use calculators. <laughs> and I kind of just giggle to myself, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's great. It's really good. You use calculators in your classroom, technology. But how much more stuff is out there that we're not aware of that we can actually be using in our classroom or having our students use outside of our classrooms? And just to kind of give a little reassurance as to why we should be doing this, it's because we can teach content in a manner that will engage students. I can't tell you the number of times that my students, if we use a new piece of technology in my classroom, their eyes get bigger and they, they want to touch it, they want to use it, they want to try it, they want to do it at home, they do everything that they possibly can do if it's something new to them. And it gets them interacting with not only the course material but also the technology. We can provide scaffolding and intervention uh, to students in need of assistance. There are a lot of different apps that we're going to talk about today, Chrome apps, but also websites that are out there that can provide students with some extra practice review. It can teach them. You could actually use it in, in a sense of a flipped classroom environment as well, some of these things that we're going to be discussing. And then last but not least is just introduce uh, students to technologies and resources that they can use outside of the classroom. At the end of the presentation, we're going to have a little discussion time, hopefully, that everyone can kind of throw out some ideas, too, of how you might be able to use technologies, whether it's in your classroom if you're a math teacher or any type of other classroom as well. And what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at uh, four primary areas. The first one's going to be a website that's called Quizlet. And then Animoto, Glogster, we're going to look at some Chrome apps that are out there right now on the Chromebook for maths uh, particularly, and then have a discussion at the end. Quizlet, just by a show of hands, has anyone ever heard of Quizlet? Okay. Has anybody ever used Quizlet before? Do you like it? My kids love it. Love it? I, I cannot wait to get school started next week so I could show my kids this website just to get them started on it and using it. It's a fantastic website and what it is it allows uh, users to create online study cards similar to flashcards. I don't know if anyone else was like this growing up where your parents made you sit at the dinner table and go over the flashcards one after another after another after another until you memorize all the multiplication facts. Well this is kind of another way that students can use not just for math but for any subject they can use online basically online flashcards. And there's also a bank of study cards available for public use. I actually was talking to my husband about trying to learn or get a little bit better with Spanish just from using Quizlet cards because they have vocabulary. You could use Spanish vocabulary words. You could do any languages on there as well. Um, on this slide, if you have not been able to pull up the presentation yet, and I can get it uh, shared to you later on, I actually put the link for Quizlets. And then there's an online tutorial that I created for everyone to help out on how to create just a basic study card. If you would click on the first link for me, please. Bless you. This is what the website looks like here, the Quizlet website. And at the very top, you can browse. You can look for different study cards if you're looking for any in general. Or you can actually create your own. There's, it's a free account. Go on. And you're able to share, too, with individuals as well of different study cards that you've created. I like this idea a lot because not only can you do vocabulary, especially for math, a lot of the students' vocabulary for Common Core coming up, vocabulary words, we used it a lot for CMTs. We use math. We actually just use the old version of the index cards. I would love to incorporate this into my classroom for this year as well. And then the tutorial itself will walk you through. What am I clicking on that? 
the tutorial itself will walk you through creating basically a basic set of study cards. I used an example of math multiplication facts, and you could use basically anything in it. I set it up in a way that hopefully every, it's pretty self-explanatory on how you what you click on next to put in the information for. And in addition to using it just as normal flashcards, you could also use it, they have games that they have right here, they have cards which allows you to use it as a normal flashcard. Learn allows you to actually type in the answers. So if it's a multiplication fact, six times seven, instead of just flipping the card over, they can actually type in 42. Um, they can test, it gives a, tr a bank of multiple choice answers given from the answers that you have provided. Speller, it's not really used the best for math, but you could use it for other um, subjects as well. Scatter is kind of, scatter and race are two forms of like games that the kids could play using these types of cards. And then you can share it, you can email it, you can even just save it on there and use it for public use so anybody can use the cards that you've created. So not only are you using the internet, not only are you producing something, but you're also providing it to other individuals as well. So you're not just being a consumer, but you're also being a producer. Okay, we'll go to Animoto. Sure thing. Um, I don't think we have access to that tutorial. I tried to click on it. You don't have access to it? Okay, I will um, give permission to. Um, the next thing that we're gonna go over is Animoto. Uh, Animoto is a free online tool where you can create and share videos of your life, your business, or your research. Uh, the free pieces are limited to certain backgrounds, sounds, images, and to only making a video with a length of 30 seconds. But there is an option to purchase this, and then that can create longer videos and uh, longer sounds and things like that. But if you want to just make a quick video to just kind of show something very quickly, whether it's to your students, to your colleagues, or just you want to make something um, of your own life, um, you can just kind of get the minimum 30 second video. Um, it can be used on your computer, your phone, or your tablet, so you can make it and you can access it from any um, of your devices. So um, I have three things that I can go through. I have the directions. And what I did here is I just went through. And you can go through this entire thing. And it's basically a step-by-step -step, um, way to get started with Animoto. So it's very easy to create an, uh, an account. You just go to Animoto.com, create an account. Once you've signed in, it's going to bring you to your backgrounds. And it will ask you if you want to make that 30 second video or if you want to sign up for the longer videos. And once you've kind of made your decision, you can choose your background. Again, like any other website, if you choose the free account, you can only get certain backgrounds. But if you have the full version, then you have your choice of any background. Once you choose your background, then you can start adding um, photos or adding text. If you add photos, you can add photos from anywhere. So you can add photos from Facebook, Flickr, um, Picasa, Instagram, anywhere. So it'll take photos from wherever you have them and it'll upload them into them. If you have them already saved on your computer, it'll upload them. So that's pictures, say if you were making a little slideshow you know, for your friends, then you can do that. Or you can upload um, photos, images, if you wanted to make a quick little slideshow for your students. You could also do that. Once you have that, you can add background music. They have an entire library of music to add to it. And then you can preview it before you actually publish it. So um, it's a really great way to um, do that. And I have a screencast here, which we're not going to actually go through because it's me talking and doing that. So um, we'll get that shared to you guys so that you can actually do that. It's basically the directions with my voice in the background. You can actually see the entire thing. But I do have a right triangle trigonometry example using um, Animoto. Um, 
It is just a 30 second. just something very quick uh, that you could do after that you've taught something or even before just to introduce a topic. Um, I did also make one um, of my personal life, like just a bunch of pictures. So um, it is really great. I did see it. Um, I think it's a good use for like weddings, things like that. But it definitely can be used for the classroom. I would definitely um, think about purchasing the longer version. And they have different plans. Um, they have like personal use plans versus business use plans. So um, it's definitely something to look into because it's something you can just kind of get across very quickly. So it's something to look into. So the next thing that we're going to look at is Glogster. And I know one of our fellow teachers that is in the uh, instructional technology program is going to be speaking on Glockster as well later on today, actually in the next presentation. And this is, Glockster is really a very neat uh, website, and I did not think that I could use it for math, but I actually found a way to do it, and that's why I'm putting it up here too for today. You can create inter interactive posters, not just yourself as the teacher, but also the students can as well. And they can be seen publicly or pr uh, privately by providing a link. And you could use it as a, re a review source for students by recording a portion of a lesson and using it on a poster. You could also use it if you are looking into doing a flipped classroom. You could actually put a lesson up onto a video, put it onto an interactive poster with screenshots, pictures, captions, anything that you would like. And then additional videos or links can also be incorporated to guide students to other reliable resources online. So not just videos, but you could also do links as well. And just a very quick... Uh, example of one is on Pythagorean theorem for Glockster. And what I, what we did is, or what I did is I just created a, basically a virtual poster. I was trying to think of it for my students in general. I always have one group of students that always miss my class one time a week because they're uh, talented and gifted students, so they're out of the building. And I always had to do reviews with them of whatever we were teaching that day. So my thought was if I were, if I was doing Pythagorean theorem, I could actually create a Glockster interact interactive poster for them give them the link and say, here's what we did in class today. Here's some other resources available to you. Why don't you watch these? If you have questions, come back tomorrow instead of meeting with them at their lunchtime or any other time that they had available. And this right here is just a video. It's, I only actually I put up five different video clips. And the first one, is it automatically was playing. But these are just clips that I found on YouTube about the Pythagorean theorem. Now my thought, because I did not have time to do it myself, but my thought is what I was, would like to do this year is just take myself doing an example of a problem that I did in class, maybe make a four to five minute video of it, put it onto my YouTube channel, and then pull that video on as the, as the main video for the interactive poster, and then later, and then put in other clips from other individuals of different videos pulled out together. And the one thing that's neat for this, not necessarily for math, but also other subjects, is there is there is a variety of different interactive posters that you can do. And one of them is a resume one. And so my first thought was for history. If you're a history teacher and your students are working on a certain historical character or person, they can actually take that person, create a resume of that individual, and then put a video or a small clip about them on there. And it makes it, I mean, we used to make posters just on a poster board that we'd buy at Kmart or Walmart, wherever you grew up, whatever store is popular. Now the students want to use technology. They want to use the internet. They want to make it interactive as possible. Okay. All right, Chromebook apps. How many um, folks in here are using Chromebooks right now or will be using them this year for their classrooms or just themselves? Okay. And this is a big reason why we wanted to talk about some of the apps that are on the Chromebook specifically for math in particular. If you have a Chromebook or if in front of you or you plan on using one, these are some that I would recommend just going to the Chromebook app store and you can download. The first one is Graphing Calculator by Desmo. 
My students love our graphing calculators. This is a, the eighth grade is the first year that they actually get to use them. They want to take them home with them every single night, and I tell them they can't because we only have one classroom set, and you know, if you're familiar with graphing calculators, you know how expensive they can be. So I always try to look for things on the internet where the students can actually use for graphing calculators. This app here for Chromebooks, and it's also our website that you can use in regular, just on any PC as well, is a graphing calculator here. If you type in, you can type in a generic linear equation, y equals 2x plus 1, you, that's my favorite, it's my go-to equation, and it graphs the equation for the students. It actually is a really nice way that the students can actually interact with a graphing calculator at home or on a Chromebook. In addition to it, if you, they sign in and create a, an account, which is free, they can share their graphs with people. They can email their graphs that they've created. One of the things I used to, well, I still do, is I will assign my students to graph homework problems. And they will come in with a variety of either graph paper, plain white paper, line paper, and handwritten graphs that are absolutely disgusting to look at sometimes. <laughs> what I was thinking is I'm going to give extra credit this year to students that actually go online and create their graphs and email it to me because then they're using the internet, using the technology to do it, but it's also an easier way. It's nicer looking, but then they can also see how it looks on the screen as well. And if you have a free account, they can actually share it through email. I believe it's also through Facebook too as well. Second one, Math Papa. I think it's a funny name, but. <laughs> math Papa is, I actually found it first because I was looking for algebra math apps, but this one you can use for more than just algebra. Math Papa has an algebra calculator, which as a math teacher I'm not that fond of because it actually gives the kids the answers, but that's okay. But if you click on the algebra calculator for me, they have different examples. They can show you, you can type in a math expression and try and it'll show the students how to go ahead and solve the equation itself and the expression. And it's a neat, it's a neat app. I don't, th it's not too much used for, I don't think, for teaching in class, but for your students to use it as a resource at home, I think is a very good option. And then we'll do the next one. Buzz Math. This one is, is, I think, is a very important one that we all should be hopefully using if you're going to be focusing on Common Core this year in your classroom. Buzz Math, oh, I already have an account, but yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. Perfect. Buzz Math is Common Core Focus. Right now, they have the 6, 7, and 8 book. I'm just going to click on the, if you could click on the 8 book for me and go to open this book. You have the different strands or the different focuses of the Common Core for eighth grade. You can go on, we'll just stay on the number lines and uh, number properties, and you can click on any of these topics here. You go over to Open, and it basically is an online Common Core math quiz for the students. It says point to negative eight on the number line, so the students have to move their arrow over to number eight, negative eight. Can you do it? That's okay. <laughs> but that shows. <laughs> no, that's a good example. I asked her to do it that way so we could see when it comes up incorrect and then what it shows you the correct answer. So. But I like this a lot because, number one, you could either have your students do it at home by themselves or it could be if you're going over common core strands and standards and you want to do a review of the entire class, you can put it right up on the screen and have work on it right there in the classroom with your students as well. GeoGebra, you've used this, correct? I did. You want to talk about this a little bit more? Sure. Okay. Uh, GeoGebra, sounds like a zebra. It does. <laughs> um, it's more used for geometry, and you can um, basically make any shape, any angle uh, that you really can think of. Um, so they start here with a point, a line. I don't know exactly what that is, um, and a triangle, and you can just make it up um, on that screen. So um, if you want, you want to pick the triangle there? Sure. Um, and what's nice is you just make a point anywhere, 
and then when you make that second point, it drags that line. And then when you make the third point, what it does is it makes um, those points. And if I remember correctly, it will find the distance. Does it do that? Maybe it was the circle. There we go. Okay. So um, what it does is it finds the, um, I believe that's the area of the triangle, and then it finds the segment um, of A, B, C, and D, which is little a, little a, or I'm sorry, little a, little b, little c, and little d, which um, they don't label. So I would assume it's each of those. It's not real good at labeling. But um, if you do use the circle, what's nice about that is um, you can make the circle. And for even uh, like trigonometry pre-calculus, you make the circle, it will give you that point. And then when you come out, it gives you the equation of the circle. And I know in a lot of those higher level classes, you know, Algebra 2, pre-calculus, trigonometry, they have a lot of trouble with finding the equation of the circle. So this is very helpful with that. Um, then they have, you know, basic angles. They'll find the measure of the angle. Um, so it's a great tool for geometry, which um, being a geometry teacher, there are not a lot of great tools for geometry. So um, this was nice to find. It's definitely one of those, um, like geometer's sketch pad, you got to play around with it to kind of find the little kinks first. Um, but it is a lot of fun. So there you have um, the angle alpha 140 degrees so um, but it's definitely a lot of fun if it's worth the time to play around with it you can definitely find the kinks and um, figure it out and I think it would be helpful for the kids to use so that is fun and then we have this next one yeah. what is that the Villa Philippe Math Academy. What this is, is, and I apologize, you can't see this side of the screen here. This is for a higher level math. This is from, well, it's a basic math GED level, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, and it actually has SAT math as well. And what it is, it's, again, it's kind of just an online resource of different math problems. You can pick different topics from, I just chose Algebra here, just different topics in Algebra, solving multi-step equations. It has the breakdown. So if you're going over the unit of multi-step equations, solving two-step equations, simple values with no negatives, they actually have the problem on the right-hand side, and then you select the correct answer of what the, pro what the answer would be. This is just another resource of on, in the classroom, you can have the students be doing this, or they can just go home and give it an additional review and practice on the topic itself. I like this a lot because for me, for differentiation, I have students, it's an Algebra 1 course, but I have students who are high level and low level in Algebra 1. So what I could do with some of to differentiate is if the student has mastered the topic, I can put them on this website, go over the unit, go to the topic that we're going on and say, why don't you work on these problems and see what you can do here. And it gives them some other options in the classroom. And then the apps for Common Core. Oh. This is primarily, I would recommend this for more of the um, elementary grade levels. For the upper grade levels, they haven't put a lot of these apps on here. And this is a resource that everybody is actually contributing to. A lot of people are putting on putting apps on here that they found that are helpful for Common Core. I, if you could just choose grade four, because that's the best the one I saw. Grade four, and then you choose the other math or language arts, and then any of them, operations and, yeah. And what it does, it goes down through the different strands of the Common Core, and it gives apps that are good on the Chromebook for that strand. And like I said, I've searched, I'm primarily eighth grade teacher, so immediately I searched eighth grade. They don't have anything on there for eighth grade yet. But some of the ones that I've been finding for the algebra level stuff, the, the graphing calculator and some of the other ones I'm probably going to start to share on there is the ones that I think are very helpful. But if you are a fourth grade math teacher, there, these are the Chromebook apps that are very helpful for Common Core and focuses on Common Core. But it also works for language arts as well. So if you're not just primarily math, you can use it as well. Yeah. 
Okay. And that goes over, that is the conclusion of our part of just showing you and introducing some of the websites and apps that we found that are helpful in the math classroom. Are there any questions on anything that we spoke of so far? Yes, yes. Oh, sure. We'll we be able to share the slides. Yes, we will be able to. It's actually on my Twitter feed. If you're following me on Twitter, at EAFerry316, I have posted on there a link to my blog site, which actually has a link to the presentation. And I know that one tutorial is not public right now. I'll make it public after the presentation so everyone can see it. Sure, it's at EAFerry316. No, it's just my emails on the last one. Can you hold that for me? Okay. Okay. And they probably can't see where they are. And I apologize for other tweets that I just, we're in the Twitter. <laughs> so we're, we're doing a bunch of my seven tweets in a row. So, One of the things that we wanted to have, too, and um, we thought of as a small discussion. I know we only have a few minutes left, but some of the other things that we think that we could possibly use in the classroom, and I want this to be an open discussion if possible, of any other ideas that you have for math classrooms in particular. If you think blogs could be useful, if you ever used any Google communities, Google Hangouts, or any social media sites such as Twitter or Facebook, is there anyone any of these anybody feels that possibly could be useful in a math classroom or just any, I know in language arts classrooms, blogs are very popular and I think they, in history classes as well. I'm not sure if a, what you all would feel about a blog in the math classroom as student driven or? I'm trying to, sorry, no, I'll walk you down. Um, I'm trying to create a blog for my math classroom. I teach high school um, geometry and math intervention. And I really want to try to get my students involved in creating the posts, almost writing articles of what we're doing, what we're working on, how we are relating topics to the real world, and getting them involved that way. I like that idea too, the real world and real world connection to what we're teaching. Because I think a lot of the students, when they sit in my class, they always say, where am I going to use this in real life? <laughs> Almost every time I have a really good answer, there's just a couple of topics where I'll say, and hey, you're Algebra 1 classroom with your teacher, Mrs. Ferry. So. <laughs> but um, I think that's the one thing they strive for, is they really do look to see a connection for real life application to what we're teaching in the, in their to them in the classes. Any other ideas for blogs in general? Google Communities or Google Hangouts. Has anyone had any practice with either Communities or Hangouts before? Does everybody know what a Hangout is? Okay. Let me just talk real quickly about what a Google Hangout is. Has any, is everybody familiar with Skype? Google Hangout, I would, I, how I would explain it, is very similar to Skype, except you can actually have up to 10 people in your, what's called your Hangout, your video conference. And you can have 10 people in the conference, and they can all see each other, and they all actually can all interact with one another at the same time. One of the thoughts... Initially, again, I go back to my talented and gifted students because they were always missing my class every single, I think it was a Monday, they would leave my classroom. So I wouldn't have, there was eight of them that would not have my class that day. My initial thought was to have a Google Hangout with them at the end of the class. I'm just going to pull up our screenshot, Kathy, so I hope you don't mind. Oh, okay. Just very quickly. And I'm just going to show you a picture of what a Google Hangout looks like here. <laughs> this is Nancy. And then there's, there's Kathy, who's in the front row here, and then myself. We had a Google Hangout online. We had it with a woman who was actually, she was on the phone, so she couldn't see us, but she could hear us. And we were just discussing, we were actually talking about the instructional technology and digital media literacy program through UNH. And what an example, and what I think would be very helpful in the classroom if you had students who either weren't in class or could not be in class, I had a student who broke his leg and he, could, he was getting rehab and was in the hospital for about a week and a half, two weeks, but he could email and he could go online. 
it's a little bit of extra work for a teacher, but you could produce and have a Google Hangout for any students to go over any topics. Um, at I, last year, we had I am very close with a lot of my students, and so they would email, they text me questions about homework, they will always send notes to me about stuff. I had one student who FaceTimed all the time. That was her thing. I had her two older sisters. I knew the mother very well, so I was okay with it. But what we would do is we would FaceTime on the phone, and then I would have, I'd turn the camera around down to the paper I was working on so she could see the work I was doing, and then she would do the work, and she would show me her work, and then we would be going over, basically, we'd be a whole other math class at 8 o'clock at night, but that's okay because she understood the topic. You could do that with Google Hangouts as well where they could see what you were working on and you could see what they were working on as well. Whoever speaks, their picture comes up as the bigger picture or you can actually choose the student to see or to put to the picture to pull up. And it's a neat resource, it, it is, but there are definitely would have to be, I think, guidelines if you're going to utilize this in your classroom, making sure the students understand where they can or should be taking part in the Google Hangout sound and those things. Yes. What you can also do is you can, there's a screen share option. So in preparing for this class, three of us that are in the same ITDML class looked at a video together. So we, we divided the screen in half, we watched a video together, we commented on it and came up with questions for this conference. So for professional development and uh, with your colleagues and discussing either one uh, piece of writing or one video, it's also a great forum. Just about up. Again, we will make all this available in public so you can get everything that's online. If you still are having trouble finding the presentation, please uh, touch base with me after in a minute here, and I can make sure that I share it with you so you have it. And hopefully you are able to find some of this information useful and helpful for your classrooms, whether you are a math teacher or any teacher at all. Oh. Okay? Thank you.